AFC Bournemouth's disappointing end to the 2020-21 season was soon to be replaced with fresh optimism, with the Cherries appointing new head coach Scott Parker before the start of the 21-22 campaign. Pre-season training camp was a tough 10 days in the 30 degrees plus heat of Marbella. Scott Parker had the players doing double sessions, with an emphasis not only on the tactical elements of the game, but also on making sure the group were one of the fittest in the division. Pre-season's key really, pre-season gives you a, a base and a foundation. We, we set out at the start of the season, wanted, you know, we work hard, we work very, very hard in terms of that and want to be the fittest team. Physically, I always knew that we would be that team. And I think we've seen that throughout the season in games as well. Games when we've come strong back end of games, our physicality um, has, has paid a large part to that really. And that, like I said, that's full credit to, to all the guys involved in that really. That was sort of the, the test really, the, everyone come in, um, obviously new manager and staff, so it was a great great time for us to build our fitness and push ourselves and, and try and learn what the, what the new staff and manager wanted. And Yeah, we just gave it all in, in Marbella and in the late 30s, heat-wise degrees, and it was just a tough, tough time, but we all got through it and I think come the end of the season, showed the fitness we had as a team definitely paid off. Pre-season was, was very tough, obviously. Um, we had a lot of young players, uh, not many signings, so um, yeah, it was very tough under the new management, um, but one I thoroughly enjoyed and, and obviously put us, put us in good stead for the season. Pre-season for the Cherries ended with games against Primera Divisions, Real Ballon Pedizza Lenense, La Liga's Granada and Premier League Chelsea. With the new season just over the horizon, expectations were high within the team. The aim coming into the season was promotion. All the boys wanted it from how the season went last season. Um, and that was, a, that was our aim from, from the get-go. Gaffer set it out straight away um, in pre-season and, and everyone knew it was a promotion um, to finish first or second uh, or even via the playoffs. So um, yeah, it was just it was promotion. You know, you didn't want to kind of talk about it too early, but obviously it was just the kind of the, the promotion. That's what I was desperate for. Um, you know, from when I joined the club, speaking to everybody around, that's what everybody was desperate to achieve. So um, I kind of noticed as soon as I came through the door um, how hard everybody was wanting to, to work towards that. The first competitive game of the season came in the form of a Carabao Cup fixture against MK Dons at Vitality Stadium. Who again is desperate, absolutely desperate Willow to pass the ball out to someone short and Solanke's not having none of it and he kicks the ball in straight to Solanke, spilt the ball to the ground, sent the clearance straight into Solanke, Adam Smith will get the ricochet over on the left side, Kilkenny with the ball into the box, looking for the volley of David Brooks, what a brilliant goal from Bournemouth, Gavin Kilkenny from left to right, it dropped onto the foot of Brooks who just placed it past Franco Ravizzoli, the MK Dons goalkeeper. Kilkenny picks it up, there's another sweeping pass from Gavin Kilkenny, the Irishman sends one out to Brooks down the right, overlapping run from Adam Smith in the box, lovely turn from Solanke and an even better finish into the far corner, another brilliant goal from Bournemouth, started off from that man Gavin Kilkenny, sweeping ball to the right, Adam Smith eventually with the delivery into Solanke who turned away from his man and slotted it past the goalkeeper. Oh, given away, Phil Billing, one-on-one -on -one with the keeper, finds the back of the net. MK Dons playing themselves into trouble again on the edge of their own area. They have just gifted Phil Billing his first goal of the season. And you don't need to tell me from the jeer, me to tell you from the jeers that uh, the MK Dons goalkeeper has passed it out and given it away again at the back to Stanislas this time. He finds David Brooks to the right side of the box. Fortunately for the keeper, men back in numbers. Stanislas across to Sadie! Debut goal for Christian Sadie off the bench for Bournemouth. What a moment for the youngster. And then again, they try and play their way out of trouble, MK Dons, and they run straight into Christian Sadie and Phil Billing, who lays it off to David Brooks, who makes it Bournemouth 5, MK Dons nil. Yeah, the MK Dons game was um, an early one. It was a bit of um, a test earlier. Obviously, it was a cup game um, before we even had a, a league game. So um, we had to, to show what we was working on throughout the, the whole of pre-season. But um, 
yeah, we was ready for that. It was a good game and then, yeah, it was just good to get playing again. After a successful first game in the Carabao Cup, the league was just six days away and a visit from West Brom would be the first of six fixtures in August. Billing trying to flick again, it's gone back for more. This is Jaden Anthony, swept in and swept goalwards by Emiliano! He helped bring Bournemouth's world crashing down back in May, but now he's a Bournemouth player and he's helping them to try and rise again. Sent in by Townsend. To work it in with his feet this time. Loops in that cross, O'Shea arriving! And arriving to great effect! And West Bromwich Albion announced their arrival this season in the Championship. Well, they are a powerful, strong team in the air. Despite not having big forwards, they've got big central defenders. Darnell Furlong as well, really capable. And this will really disappoint Scott Parker. Not that, but this bit here. Huge boots of honor down Juma tonight. He's linked up beautifully with Zamora. Solanke was waiting and passed in by Philip Billing. Bournemouth felt the playoff pain last season, but they are starting to climb back to their feet. Day one, game one, and they have a 2 1 lead. Well, take a bow, Jaden Anthony and Jordan Zamora, because without you, this just doesn't happen. It's a great piece of endeavour initially by Anthony, but look at the willing run of Zamora. It's picked out beautifully, and while Zamora's cross doesn't find its intended target, David Button can only palm the ball into the danger area. Matt Phillips, Kilkenny was after him. Phillips smuggled through to Moet. Robinson! Brilliant from West Bromwich Albion! They climb! again Alex Moore on that left foot he knows exactly where his teammate is and it's a brilliant all-round goal still work to be done isn't it when it arrives at Callum Robinson's right foot but he gets the perfect contact and the perfect direction again got a response over to you Bournemouth again West Brom August the Sixth, I want to say, um, yeah, I don't know, that day, the build-up towards it, for me personally, it was, um, you know, a sink or swim, and I always back myself no matter what, so I, I said to myself, you know, I'm going to go give it my all, and that's all I can do. But yeah, no, nah, it was a great day, and um, it was the start of something special. That was a, a special day, obviously, I'd played a few times last season, but never got to start, and yeah, no, when, obviously, the, ma the manager told me um, I was playing, I was... I had a long day waiting for the game and I was just trying, to, trying not to be nervous. I was chilling, waiting for the game and then, you yeah, know, when, when you cross the line, it, it all goes out the window and, and yeah, no, it's a special day. Brooks over on the far side now for the Cherries. Trying to get some energy into their forward play. Little link up with Billy, that's nice. And now David Brooks into the box. Shoots yes. in the back of the net, David Brooks. It was Solanke, in fact, with the link up and David Brooks fired it across Samba and it nestled in the left-hand side of the goal and it's the Cherries' first notable move on target, really. 28 minutes gone and David Brooks is off the mark in the league this season. That's three in total. Forest nil, Cherries one. A two-angled a two wall, this one, as it's flipped in by Zinkenagel. Headed towards goal and down. With a downward head up, and Forrest from that set piece on the left hand side have levelled it up with only three minutes gone in the second half. Inside the Forest half, Billing, left hand side now. Anthony inside the left corner of the penalty, plays it back to Phil Billing, who smashes it into the back of the net. And Phil Billing scores for the third successive game, right in front of those travelling Bournemouth fans who are loving their day out in the East Midlands so far. Billing, once again, the Cherries' goal machine. It's Forest 1, Cherries well. 2. As a, oh, David Brooks, silly, silly, silly boy, he's pulled back his man 
I'll say 2-2 and David Brooks has stupidly got himself sent off and we have to say we called it coming you're surfing a tightrope when you've already got yourself booked early in the game and David Brooks inexplicably pulled back I'll say 2-2 shirt debut here because Brennan Camp is stripped off Zhao Carvalho goes past the challenge of Ibsen Rossi, knocks it to his right-hand side, Johnson squares it, and Graben can't get there. There's a superb challenge in there from Chris Mepham. What a tackle to put it away, as Graben seems sure to tap it in. What a tackle by Meps, that was absolutely... Well, it could be a, a match saver. Yeah, the Forest game at the start of the season was, um, was, a, was a hard game, uh, an enjoyable game, you know, good atmosphere. Um, Early on in the season, um, I thought at already then when we won the two-one um, with the team we had, you know, young, few players who hadn't played that many championship games to then go away at Forest, which is a tough place to go, um, and then to win two-one was just unbelievable. And even after the West Brom game and stuff, um, but you had a good feeling about this team, um, young, hungry, and everything. So yeah, it was like I said, uh, I think the start of the season set us up nicely with the with the points we got. Pearson's ball over the top for Solanke to get in the channel. Great pace from Dom Solanke to get there in the penalty. Oh, 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 yeah. oh, Dom yes. Solanke! Oh, oh. Slim pickings in this second half, but when it matters, the Cherries number nine has opened his league account for the season. A clinical finish across the goalkeeper, and 13 and a half minutes remain here as Bournemouth break the deadlock at St Andrews. Birmingham nil, Bournemouth one. It was bouncing just before him, side footed it over the top, and Dominic just used his pace. He got away from the centre-half and kept his composure, hard and low into the far post, great goal. Stanislas as the Cherry looks for the second goal that would surely put this game to bed. In it comes, driven to the back post where Ibsen Rossi's pulled away, Got it back in and nice. smashed into the back of the net and the Cherries have made the game safe and it's a Cherry's first goal for Jaden Anthony and you cannot say he doesn't deserve it for what he's produced over the last few weeks. Fantastic moment for the youngster, fires it into the top corner, the Cherries are on for their sixth successive win here and it's one of the star men, one of the star young men, Jaden Anthony. It, it was planned. And Chris, if you see just before Junior yeah. takes the, the set piece, Ibsen Rossi goes over to Junior and tells him to do something. Ibsen Rossi pulls off the back post, someone blocks him, heads it back, and uh, Jaden Anthony's there to, to pick up the pieces and hopefully far, fire home the win. I say still to this day I haven't recreated that feeling. Um, it was, I felt like a, a long time coming, obviously. I had a disallowed one against someone on Forest and then yeah, no, um, it was a special day and yeah, no, I couldn't really put into words how, how that felt. Stanislas hurdles the challenge of husband. He's got two to his left, but he goes to his right and Solanke, edge of the box. Dom Solanke looking for a shooting chance and Dom Solanke takes that chance. Out comes the bow and arrow celebration from Solanke. Pinpoint precision once more, hitting the middle of the target. Dom Solanke, five and a half minutes in. The Cherries' top scorer is up and running now. Two for the season in the league, 1-0. Stanislaus, he was on the ball, he done all the hard work. Having said that, it was still a, a cute angle to score from, but the way Dom feels at the moment, he loves finding that far post in, in the corner of the net. Fantastic start. And now Cherry's on the move again, Mark Condes right-hand side, clips across in, deflected, and the stooping header from Solanke makes it two! And Dom Solanke, just 19 minutes into the game, sudden on a hat-trick. Stanislas set up the first one, made way for Mark Condes, who sets up the second one. Solanke two, Bournemouth two, back for nil. Well, Mark Condes deserves such credit. I thought Brooks he played him a bit wide, but he got his foot underneath it and just clipped it over the first centre-half. Dominic was making the run. Fantastic flick header, just into the bottom corner. Keeper couldn't do nothing about it. Luke Garbutt then to swing this one in for the right touchline for Blackpool. The first hit was a Cherries one, it's back off the post and forced in from close range. And Blackpool have turned this game on its head. The Cherries got the first contact off the left-hand post and as it bounced down in the six-yard box, it was turned home into the roof of the goal. And we've played 12 minutes of the second half. It's Bournemouth 2, Blackpool 1. 
once again it's John Jules who knocks it in behind him. Some Rossi just caught ball watching for a second there. It's half a claim for a penalty. Oh, the referee's given it! And Bournemouth from 2 0 and cruising could now be pegged back to 2 2 by Blackpool's top man last season, Jerry Yates, who does drive it straight down the middle. And the Blackpool fans on the far side in jubilation. Their side have come from nowhere. Bournemouth 2, Blackpool 2. After a great start to the campaign, hopes were high for the Carabao Cup's second round tie against Norwich. Unfortunately, the Cherries were beaten convincingly at Carrow Road. However, with a draw in their next game away at Hull City, Bournemouth ended August undefeated in the league. The start to the season was a, was a remarkable one, really. A brilliant start, unbeaten, um, real solid opening game of the season against a very good competitive West Brom side who had just come out of the Premier League. Um, we was very young, I think that day there was a very young squad on the bench as well. Um, and then, like you said, to go for August with the points we accumulated was, um, was very pleasing and, and very promising, really. The Cherries looked to continue their unbeaten run into September and the month started off in spectacular fashion with a young left-back scoring his first professional goals for the club. Brooks down the right, linking up with Smith, back to Brooks, infield now, edge of the box, lovely touch from Solanke, back to Brooks, he thinks about shooting, lays it off to Jade Nancy, Jordan Zamora is there once and then twice! Billings there to help out as well. He finds Phil Billing, left side of the box. Early cross in from Billing, full stretch. Goalkeeper spilt it. Solanke off the post and in within seconds of the second half getting underway. Bournemouth double their lead and having missed a good opportunity at the end of the first half. Solanke does find the back of the net at the start of the second. Bournemouth 2, Barnsley 0. Phil Billing gets stamped on. Here's Jordan Zamora flying forward. Is there a second for Jordan Zamora? There is a second for Jordan Zamora. He puts the game to bed for Bournemouth. The North Stand is on its feet and Jordan Zamora is loving life inside the Cherries' first team. Bournemouth 3, Barnsley nil. What a day, a day that I will never forget for sure. My first professional goals, first goal. Jaden's still fuming about it that he didn't get an assist for it, but you know, good play from Brooksy down the right, then yeah, into Dom, back to Brooksy, into Jay, and then straight on the underlap, shot straight away, got ricocheted. Lucky enough, it just happened to fall right to my feet, which was um, it's perfect. So yeah, I still think right now, I think, wow, what are the chances of it just to literally land like right in front of me again, and yeah. And oh, where do I begin? That second goal. Some, some, some say that should have been awarded Puskas. Goal of the, goal of the year, to be fair. But nah, I'm joking. Um, now, honestly, what a um, <laughs> yeah, you know, it was a good, it was a good like goal for myself personally, just to show like I think the fans what um, I think the fans, I think the management they knew what I was capable of, but just my desire to run with the ball and um, beat players, and then a very cool, calm, collected finish. So yeah, and I remember that celebration. The emotions was just amazing and yeah, there was a great day. 
and we won. So it's another plus three points. It's given away by QPR. Here's Jaden Anthony into the box. Jaden Anthony finds the far corner, and out of nowhere, Bournemouth have the lead against QPR. They've been up against it in the opening ten minutes, but a howler on the edge of their own box from the visitors, and it gives Jaden Anthony his second Bournemouth goal. The Cherries two, keep the, the Cherries one, keep the R nil. Back in field to Brooks. Brooks turns away from trouble to the edge of the D. Lays it off to Dominic Solanke. He's got Jaden Anthony to his left. Anthony back to Solanke. The birthday boy gets a birthday goal. And Dominic Solanke just can't stop finding the back of the net. Five in his last five, number six for the season. And Bournemouth double their lead, the Cherries two, QPR nil. Bournemouth looking pretty nice in the table, his chair. Willock, edge of the D for QPR, pulls the trigger early, deflects out to the left-hand side. McCallum with the ball into the box, still McCallum, deflected, it's past Mark Travers, and QPR are back in the game. McCallum with the goal, it's Bournemouth 2, QPR 1. Cahill forward from the back, down this near right-hand side. Adam Smith does well, in field. He's towards the edge of the D now, he's got Billing to his left. Here is Phil Billing. Billing shoots, in finds the bottom corner! Phil Billing, from outside the 18-yard area, picks his spot and puts Bournemouth in front away at Cardiff, 1-0. Well, that was a fantastic break. Smithy instigated it, but what he got to Phil Bill, he's looking for the bottom corner, and my, didn't he find it? Lerma, top of the box, Ryan Christie, over the top, lovely ball for Billing, right for there, Bill Billing again! Second game in a row, a teasing ball from Christie into his path, and Phil Billing with his inferior right foot, once again finds the bottom corner of the net, 16 gone, Bournemouth after a huge let off at the other end, the one up on Luton. Well, he keeps finding the net, doesn't he? What a great run that was, broke the offside trap, hard and low into the corner. Christie's gone across to take it again, they take it short, the Cherries see a two-on-one opportunity, and now Anthony back to the top of the box, Jordan Zamora, then Anthony again, Christie desperately hanging on left side, trying to stay on side, which he's managed to do, Ryan Christie, in it comes towards Solanke with the header! Tom Solanke knocks it into the bottom left corner, and just over half an hour in here, Tom Solanke makes it five in his last three and a bit games at the Vitality Stadium. His 100th appearance in the last game, another landmark for him on target again, Dom Solanke 2 0. Yeah, fantastic work from the corner, a little set play routine, nice little clip to the far post, punches the ball down, goalkeeper's got no chance right in the corner. Short corner again taken by Luton, taken to Jordan Clark, to the top of the box and Cornick, who takes a touch outside the D, flicked in by Naismith, headed clear by Billing, then Lerma and Solanke will combine, they should have combined to clear, but Solanke miscued his clearance, and now a chance inside right for Berry, will try and flash it across, goal, and it's an own goal of Lloyd Kelly! And Bournemouth really have only got themselves to blame there, a miscued clearance, and Luton take advantage, Mark Travers is hurt in the build-up, but as it flashed across the six-yard box, it looked like the last touch came off Lloyd Kelly, and Luton have got the goal they've been threatening with 26 minutes remaining. Cherries 2, Luton 1. The Cherries went close multiple times against Peterborough, but unfortunately never found the breakthrough, with the game finishing in a nil-nil draw. However, Scott Parker's side finished September with four wins out of five and still undefeated, climbing up to second in the table, only off the top by virtue of goal difference. October started with a visit from newly relegated Sheffield United, 
The game would prove a tough test for Scott Parker and his men, as they would have to come from a goal behind for the first time this season. Again, Solanke chases down, hoping that Olsen might make a false touch, but the goalkeeper this time is solid in his clearance down the field. Over the head of Kelly, bounces on for Billy Sharp now, right side of the penalty area now, up against Zamora, and he squares it for the on-rushing Gibbs White! And Sheffield United on the counter-attack have become the first team to take the lead against Bournemouth this season. Billy Sharp took it up right side of the box, and the on-rushing Morgan Gibbs White lashed it beyond Travers, and after 56 minutes, it's the travelling fans from South Yorkshire in jubilation over there. It's Bournemouth nil, Sheffield United 1. The Cherries look over the top for Salanke. He's gone in behind Davis here. Can he get in his stride? Dom Salanke. He's into oh, the box. Penalty. He goes down. That has to be. Ball. The referee's having a look at the linesman. Is it on the edge of the area? It's a penalty. Tommy Elphick called it. It was right on the edge of the box as the lunging challenge came in. Dom Salanke with a few little steps. Waits for the goalkeeper to move. And finds the right hand side of the goal. It's a brilliant penalty for the Cherries top scorer. Season and the Cherries back on terms at 1 1. Solanke, though, is hurt. Christie's got it. Solanke's back involved again now. 25 yards from goal. The crowd have come alive as well here. Ryan Christie, right side of the penalty here for the Cherries. Looking for options. Billy, oh. one of them. game against Sheffield United was was a big one to be fair I think um, we had a, a long unbeaten run at the start of the season and was flower with confidence and uh, we hadn't really been been through too much but then obviously that game came and we went behind but um, you saw quite quickly we we turned it around and, and that showed all the character. Sheffield United was um, was a big moment really because it was a moment that we um, first time that we've obviously gone a goal down um, and the reaction of the team to then come back um, and get ourselves back into the game, playing again against a, a very good side and a real test for us on the day. I remember the weather not being too great back end of the, of the second half. And um, yeah, so Philip Billings' goal to, to win the game for us was, was pleasing, like I said, against a very good side. It was probably our toughest game to date. Um, it was a big challenge for us, so they were a good side on the day. Um, and very pleased to, to come back after, after going a goal down as well. And at seven minutes on the watch here at Ashton Gates, the Cherries fans chant the David Brooks song, and Ashton Gates joins in. To Ryan Christie on this near right side for the Cherries, with Stacey herring on outside him. Jack Stacey has it, right corner of the penalty, whipped it towards Jamal Lowe, and Jamal Lowe crowned his full Bournemouth debut with his first Cherries goal. What a finish from the Jamaican international, Stacey with the assist, and Jamal Lowe silences Ashton Gates, the former Swansea man on target across the M4. It's Bournemouth leading Bristol City by a goal to nil. And then Christie with a big switch out to the left where Solanke and Zamura are there. Solanke had a little look to his left, realised Zamura was there and left it to him. Here is Jordan Zamura. He'll step over into the area. Zamura might shoot from there. He does shoot from there. Oh, and Jordan Zamura smashes it into the roof of the net. An acute angle. But once again, the Zimbabwean found the top of the goal. His third of the season. And the Cherries just before half-time have doubled their lead to 2-0.
leading up into the Bristol game, um, when everyone found out the news, it was, it was, I think it, when we found out the news, it hit us because obviously we're so close here and we support everyone and um, we have that kind of emotional attachment to that. So when we, when we did find that out, it was, it was tough, but at the same time, we I think everyone kind of used that into the into going into the game and when it when when they started clapping, um, I kind of looked around and it was it was a, it was an amazing moment and I'm sure Brooksy appreciated it at the time as well. Um, obviously, when Jam scored, we done that little celebration for Brooksy and I know it meant a lot for him in that in that moment. It was just a message of we're here for you, um, no matter what. We're here for everyone in the, in the team. Um, that's that's not questionable. Everyone knows that we we back each other and and support each other in any way possible. Give it away again, boy Stoke. And now it's a chance for Ryan Christie, right corner of the penalty here for the Cherries here, onto his left foot, spilled by the goalkeeper and turned in by Dom Solanke. Ryan Christie's shot couldn't be held by the Welshman Adam Davis and Dom Solanke poaches the goal, his eighth league goal of the season and the Cherries have at last lit up the Bet365 Stadium by taking the lead on 51 minutes. Yeah, great anticipation by Dominic. But you have to say, Ryan Christie was the instigator. One touch, two touches to the side, fires it hard and low, bounces just before the keeper, always difficult off his chest, and Dom's there for a tap-in. The Solanke over the inside left channel now, fed by Kelly, he goes down, the referee's out of look, it's a penalty! Solanke was caught! Mr. Brooks has pointed to the spot as the challenge came in from Turton and Bournemouth have got themselves a spot kick. Here he comes, Dom Solanke sends the keeper the wrong way, he sends the ball into the bottom right corner and Bournemouth have got a perfect start just as they did last time out against Huddersfield. This time last season they were on to get five at the moment, it's one. As Christie knocks it in towards Billy, knocks it down for Dom Solanke. Lovely link up, smashing finish. Jerry's go too clear with 20 minutes on the clock. And Dom Solanke hits 10 league goals for the season. Beautifully crafted, expertly finished. Two zip. Yeah, absolutely fantastic goal. Great build up. Great header by Phil Bill. Right back into Dom's path. Volley, kept it low and passed the keeper. Excellent goal. Out to the left hand side of the penalty. Anthony feeds Ryan Christie now. Christie's ball towards the back post. This time it's volleyed down and this time it is in. And it's Lloyd Kelly, the captain. A left footed volley at the back post. And the Cherries surely have killed this one off with a third goal. More than a quarter of the game still to play. But the Cherries move surging clear of Huddersfield. Thanks to their captain, Lloyd Kelly. Yeah, I think um, obviously at the start of the season, I wanted to just score as many goals as I could. Um, then they kept building up higher and higher. I was just taking it in fives, really, hit five, ten, fifteen, and so on. And um, playing with Phil this season has been been amazing for me. I think um, he's definitely supported me in, in many ways. Um, he's hardworking, just like me, and. And he's got a lot of quality and I think um, that showed with the, I don't know how many assists he's got for me now, but um, yeah, I'm thankful for, for all of those, those assists that he's got me in and helped me get those goals. Cherries are waiting to take this corner over on the far left side, which is going to be delivered by Jane Nantony. Lloyd Kelly lurking at the back post, reading for this one, have brought everybody back. It goes deep to Gary Cahill coming in behind and they're headed down and in! At the back post, Tom Solanke in the town of his birth! finds the back of the net for the 11th time in the league this season. Cahill gets the assist and Solanke piled in. The defenders on the line couldn't stop it. 
knocks it into the roof of the net themselves, but Solanke gets the goal two minutes before half-time. Well, that was excellent, Chris. Set play, one from the training ground, they've worked on that. Ball to the far post, Cahill heads it back, perfectly across goal. Dominic's there to get another goal. And now Jamal Lowe, left side of the penalty area for the Cherries here. Lowe goes for the corner, and Jamal Lowe scores for the first successive time here at Reading, this time in Bournemouth colours, and Bournemouth go flying clear early in the second half here, short of the hour, then march to the top of the championship. Looks like it's going to continue. Jamal Lowe, minutes after coming off the bench, finds the bottom corner, his second goal in Cherries colours. It's Reading nil, Bournemouth 2. Two minutes of added time to play. In it comes from Swift. The glancing header goal was a brilliant save by Travers to preserve that clean sheet as the glancing header was aiming for the bottom right corner. Travers took a couple of steps, scrambling across his line and threw himself to preserve that stutter. Yeah. Yeah. The start of the season was, was a great start to get into the team for one and then yeah, to, to keep my position and and start so well with you know with clean sheets and stuff was great. Um, a great confidence boost for me and gave me that chance to grow in the team and and um, you know I was trying to show what I could do and give to the team, which was you know grateful for the manager for trusting me and obviously um, Birchie and Gaz for working so hard on me in pre-season throughout the whole season and pushing me to to where they think I can get to. The start of the season was almost too good to be true. Um, you know, we, we were, at one point I was thinking that an unbeaten, red, un, unbeaten run was never going to end. Um, everyone kind of kept telling me through the, the nature of the league, it's, it's, it's never going to be that easy. And um, yeah, it ends up going, going right down to the, to the wire. But um, yeah, you probably look back at it and think you wouldn't have it any other way. The start we got, got off to was, was incredible. Did I expect us to, to go unbeaten for as long as we did in this division with in terms of the dynamics of us, maybe not. That was, it was. Um, I didn't expect that, and that's not me um, being negative anyway. It was. It's a tough league, and I knew the challenges. So, for us to do what we was doing was um, was, was was pretty special in that sense, really. And uh, I was pleased that we could continue where we were going at that moment in time, really. At the end of October, Bournemouth had gone three months without a loss and was sitting pretty on top of the table, five points clear of Fulham in second. Unfortunately, all good things had to come to an end and Bournemouth's first loss would come at home to Preston North End. Here's Reese now Maguire, out towards this right-hand side, picked up by Barkhazen, level with the edge of the penalty, whipped in towards the penalty spot and smashed into the back of the net! A fantastic finish from Ben Whiteman! strike into the top corner and what he wouldn't say it's been coming you could certainly say Bournemouth haven't been at their best and Preston have broken through here and it comes towards the edge of the penalty looking for Solanke who turns his man on this occasion Pearson wants it laid off instead it goes for Stacey who wound up for a shot and then pulled out of the last minute just outside the penalty area Stacey still has it trying to go around the outside here Jack Stacey low cross in it runs for Phil Billing who goes past one and right the ball. Thirteen minutes left. We'll get Willow the tactician to keep an eye on that. But Preston move forward, coming forward, comes back to the penalty spot. McCann! Preston back in front here on the counter-attack. Ali McCann on his first goal of the season slots it into the bottom right corner. And Bournemouth have got work to do from behind again here. It's Preston at Vitality Stadium again. 2-1. I think Preston was was definitely a game that probably the team were probably felt invincible at that moment really, didn't feel, had never felt a loss, probably had never felt any real adversity um, 
and the, w the way the game was, um, it was a game that really I didn't expect us to, to lose. We get back into the game and go, go, go le level up after they go 1-0 up. Um, so yeah, I think that was a big moment. I think it was a big psychological moment for the team as well. Uh, and I think it probably had a bigger psychological effect um, because of what we'd done previous to that. That one defeat was probably um, uh, a bit more than a jab to, to the head for us, really, because obviously we were just so used to winning and, and doing what we was doing. Cherry's trying to put Billing in. He's onside now, down the left-hand side. Solanke wants it square. Solanke gets it square. Still going to run for Leif Davis if he can get there ahead of Norton, which he does. Leif Davis is cross! Solanke! What a finish! And let's give a big up to Leif Davis in from the cold, a pinpoint cross, but what about the finish from Dom Solanke, nearly horizontal on the volley, into the bottom left corner, one of the goals of the season, 49 minutes gone, 2-0 Cherries. down as Ben Hamer, the goalkeeper, got the ball and then I realised I shouldn't have done that because here's Ryan Christie into the area, Ryan Christie's shot is deflected, Anthony with the header! Jaden Anthony surely makes the game safe! Christie looked like getting his first Cherries goal but as it loops up to the back post, Jaden Anthony arched his neck and headed the ball into the back of the net. 64 gone, it's one of three, Swansea. Well, I thought Christie was just going to let it back to Dominic to get his hat trick but he went himself and we got a lucky bounce, but there's nothing lucky about the header. Still have plenty to do there. And again, the goalkeeper starts it all off. Phil Billing's number is up on the board, but on the other side of the board is a green number four. And that is the new squad number of Lewis Cook, who last played a game for the Cherries in March of this year. His second serious knee ligament injury to the same knee. He's gradually made his way back and listen to the wall that he'll get when he comes on. Billings getting a huge ovation on his way off for the Cherries today. 3 it up with eight minutes left. But it's a moment that Lewis Cook will have thought about for months and months. Here he comes. Here is that roar from Lewis Cook. Such a popular player, such a wholehearted player. Here's Jamal Lowe, surely against his old club, he's going to try and go himself here. Onto his right foot, comes across the edge of the six-yard box. Rogers is challenging, and eventually it's back to Jamal Lowe. There's space for Jaden Anthony, tries to roll it in, he does roll it in, and Jaden Anthony has a brace, and the Cherries have put the Cherry on top of this game. They have four against Swansea. What a way to head into the international break. Bouncing back to four. The Swansea game was a tough one. Um, the first 20 minutes they came out really sharp and um, it was a bit shocked really. But um, yeah, we managed to, to turn the game around and yeah, I had a yeah, nice, nice goal from, from Leafs Cross, which is um, probably one of my favourites this season, yeah. It was everything to be honest. Uh, I found myself uh, before the game um, on Tuesday uh, reflecting on, on the journey and stuff leading up to, to that day and obviously Coming back um, against Swansea at the time was, was a massive achievement for myself as well and my family. So that was up there, one of the highlights of my career at the moment. And um, yeah, it was amazing. Prepared to deliver this next corner. Flashed in right under the crossbar. And this time there's no answer as Derby power the ball into the back of the net. The set piece comes good. A close range header from Jason Knight beyond his Irish teammate Mark Travers. The defender 
You don't see it very often, Matt. The defender takes the goal kick. Yeah, it's a bit strange how this... Oh, Kellarouz has stood on it! What a mess! Is there a chance for the Cherry Solanke? Here's Ryan Christie, on to goal! Saved by Roos! They're off the line from Anthony! Still Jaden Anthony! There's the equaliser! Third time of asking, and Derby have dug themselves a hole as if it hadn't been dug for them this week already. A terrible goal kick routine. They tried a couple of times through Christie and Anthony, and it came back to Jaden Anthony, who made no mistake second time around. Here come the cherries down the middle. Jefferson Lerma threads in Dominic Solanke, and Roos is beaten for a second time, and it's the cherries top scorer again. Picked up again by Kilkenny, Stacey a bit of a hot potato, trying to get rid of it quickly. And now Kazim Richards to the left, and here's Tom Lawrence inside the penalty area. Lawrence tries to bend one, oh, that's a great equaliser. It's a fabulous goal from the derby captain, Tom Lawrence. And the Cherries just didn't clear their lines as they needed to. Here come Derby again down the left-hand side now, threading it in behind an opportunity. That might be a penalty, the referee's had a look at it, that is a penalty. Can they now get themselves in front? Lawrence against Travers, down the middle, 3-2 Derby, a second for Tom Lawrence. And maybe some light at the end of the tunnel for Wayne Rooney's side. Left arm up in the air, delivers, right-footed towards Cahill at the back post, wins the header down. Drops to the feet of Jefferson Lerma, still inside the box, surrounded by blue shirts, back out to Stacey, cross towards the back post. Solanke is there, and Dominic Solanke pokes it home, and Bournemouth do find the breakthrough just before the break. Oh, Solanke on the money again for the Cherries. Yeah. There goes the bow and arrow celebration, bullseye, nil yeah. nil, Bournemouth won. There's a ball over the top, Benekafobi in behind Gary Cahill, still a Fobi. Slots it past Mark Travers, sucker punch. Millwall level up in the den. 1-1 with the Cherries, former Bournemouth striker Benekafobi with the goal. Ryan Christie gets caught very late. Play on, says the referee. Advantage. Jaden Anthony down the left. Anthony back onto his right foot. Whips across in towards the back post. And he flies the net. Bournemouth have had to be really patient this afternoon. They do find the goal. It's Jaden Anthony again. Bounces out to Steve Cook, edge of the area. Bournemouth recycle the play to the left, down this near side. Jaden Anthony, back onto his right foot, crosses early. That's in swinging. Billing! 2-0! Jaden Anthony with a beauty of a ball. Billing with a finish in front of Moore. Bournemouth double their lead. Bournemouth 2, Coventry 0. Given away by Bournemouth and Jefferson Lerner on the edge of his own box and he's brought down Gordon. The referee's got a decision to make. Straight red card. Jefferson Lerner dismissed. Everyone stays forward for Coventry. Kelly through the legs of Leif Davis. Still Kelly to the byline, across the face of goal. Travers with the touch, sent goalwards and sent in. Coventry have a goal back against the 10 men of Bournemouth. 
We've got five minutes to play. Can the Cherries hold on for the three points? Steve Cook holds it up on the edge of the area. Here's Kane again with the cross. It's over the head of Travers, and it's in. Can you believe it? Bournemouth let another lead slip from 2-0 up. Jefferson Lerner sent off. And Kane with what was certainly a cross over the head of Travers finds the back of the net. With a set of indifferent results throughout November, Bournemouth had dropped down to second behind Fulham and the battle for top spot would come to a head as the two sides clashed at the start of December. Square ball to Billing, Anthony's wide right. He goes for Stacey instead, gets it all wrong, the pass is behind Stacey, now Cabano will come flying forward through the middle, finds Mitrovic to the left, inside the area, Mitrovic onto his right foot, clearance by Steve Cook once, and then twice on the six-yard area, almost as if he was a goalkeeper, Steve Cook, throwing and putting his body on the line. Absolutely. Keeping his arms out of the way, incredible stuff from the Cherries captain. Unbelievable, fantastic blocks. Absolutely saving the goal from being scored. 45 huge minutes coming up for the Cherries. Will we have a winner? Nil-nil away at Fulham. As a referee restarts the second half, Solanke inside the box. Dominic Solanke! Within seconds of the restart, a huge goal for Bournemouth away at Fulham in this top of the table clash. But it had to be, didn't it? Their top scorer, number 17 for the season, right in front of the travelling Cherry supporters who are going wild away to our left. Fulham nil, Bournemouth one. Now, Jordan, do you know what? That is a set play. I've seen them do that four or five times now. Right from the kickoff, exactly the same sequence of passes. And then the last one, they tried to put Solanke in. And he's unbelievable. What a goal. What a start. Fulham with time to move it back out to Kearney on the right. Further right, he finds Harry Wilson, pulls it back to De Cordova Reed, right edge of the box, marked closely by Adam Smith. Space for Kearney, curls on towards the back post, Mitrovic! And the header in the end, I think, has come from Tos in the centre back. Mitrovic was flying in there, either way, it's into the far corner. And the league leaders level up against the Cherries at Craven Cottage. That Fulham game, as I said, you felt it was a massive game. Two teams who was clear goal was get promotion. Um, yeah, and Steve Cook's um, double block was was unbelievable. He, he was doing my my job for me, which was which was class. But um, yeah, it's moments like that that sort of define the season. That helped us get a point that night, which was which was huge come the end of the season. Yeah, the, the kick off in in Fulham. Um, was amazing and, and to see it uh, succeed in, in the game was an yeah, amazing feeling. I think everyone went crazy on the pitch. It's been ridiculous to see how many other teams that have, that have uh, tried to do it. Uh, in Spain I've seen at least three or four teams that have tried to do it and recently Real Madrid in, in the Champions League. To see it come off was just uh, unbelievable. I, like, I had a feeling but I didn't actually think oh we're going to score straight from kickoff. So. But um, we even did a Reading away uh, in the season, we were close um, as well, but um, to see it work was unbelievable, man. That worked to an absolute T, really. I mean, to execute the way it executed the players, full credit to the players, Wellesley as well, um, to then go and execute like we did, every single movement, every bit of timing, it was perfect. It reminded me of like the NFL, you know, them NFL like runs, or, um, and everything just fell into place, and then Dominic Solanke to to smash it in. The next two fixtures resulted in defeats to Blackburn Rovers and Middlesbrough. But the Cherries ended the year on a high with two positive results, the first of which would come away at QPR. Four players hovering around the penalty spot. Now they make their move, and it comes, it's flicked goalwards! It's a brilliant header! And Dominic Solanke makes amends for his earlier miss. His 18th championship goal of the season. 
Seni Dieng just had to watch him fly past his left shoulder. Brilliant delivery whipped in. That was Solanke who had so much to do. Leaning back and just flicking it towards the far post. Stacey takes quickly, Solanke was the brightest and chests it down nicely into space towards the corner flag. Dom Solanke now attacking the penalty area. Right hand side into the feet of Ryan Christie who went for goal defending. See this corner, we'll come back to that. Mark Condes is on. In comes the corner towards the near post, nearly found Mark Condes. Wesley Salama! Oh, he smashed it home! Jefferson Lerma nearly took the goal frame off! Wow! Smashed it with his right foot, hit the woodwork, bounced down over the line, and the cherished Colombian midfield general has roared back in the last couple of games and gets a goal for his credit as well. Seven minutes remaining. That is good night, Cardiff, I'm afraid for them. AFC Bournemouth finished the year back at the top of the league, but had played two more games than promotion rivals Fulham. The first game of the new year was an FA Cup fixture against Yeovil Town at Hewish Park. That's a brilliant ball, it's a decent take, and it's a lovely goal for Bournemouth. The championship side hit the front against their National League opponents. And Emiliano Marcondes has his first goal since the start of August. And that is the quality with which they can unlock you. Again, it slid through to Marcondes, and it is a fabulous second. That moment of quality once again. And the goal so similar to the opener, the run from Mark Condes, the coolest of finishes, and Bournemouth lead by two goals to nil.
decision to find low, checks back, and it's in. Emiliano Arcundes has his hat-trick for Bournemouth. And the save from Dylan Barnes, not enough. The championship side restore their two-goal advantage. And Emilio Marcondes will be taking home the match ball. 3-1, they lead Yeovil Town. My first hat-trick in, in Yeovil was, was uh, yeah, special for me and uh, a big moment for, for this season. Uh, and uh, yeah, something I have been, been working uh, hard on my finishing this season, I, I think. I've been uh, having a, a good season with, with, my, with my body and uh, I've been ha be able to have a lot of training session and do a lot of extra uh, finishings uh, after training. So uh, f for that game, it was like a big thing for me because it was like finishing that we have been training uh, with the coaches. Uh, Gary O'Neill, we have been, we've just been training that over the top where Mipsy played, played it into me. and. Uh, uh, so it was it was lovely to see what you do on the training pitch is actually uh, paying off in the game. Throwing is taken by Bree back to the right side of the box and Panzu's ball into the box, glanced on by Bradley and now a chance for Adebayo. Travers is there and Lloyd Kelly, who can't believe it, for the second time this season has scored an own goal against Luton. Campbell now through the middle for Luton from midfield. Shoots low. Oh, that's a great strike. There's absolutely no doubt about that one from Alan Campbell. The hard-working Stacey has won it back. And then Adebayo is pressing back in the challenge over on the far side. But Stacey's wriggled between two of them. Great run this from Jack Stacey. And the cross to Mark Ondes, who scores again. Made by some brilliance from Jack Stacey on the right-hand side. Who went past two Luton players. Teased it on a sixpence for Emi Mark Ondes to head home. And ball with a right back in this one. Just six minutes into the second half. Yeah. Luton two, Bournemouth one. Up towards the halfway line, Marcondes, now some room for Christie, who played a blind ball but still manages to get it beyond Amari Bell. Stacey's coming up. Here's Jamal Lowe now, Stacey outside him, Jamal Lowe into the peri, pulls it back to Morgan Rogers! Yes! And Morgan Rogers off the bench, makes an immediate impact! The Manchester City Lowe, who has waited for it all to click in a Bournemouth shirt, has found his time here at Kenilworth Road as he lashes in the equaliser. Bournemouth from two down, back to 2-2. Two -two. Now the right-hand side for Bree to pull a ball in, teases one to the back post. Oh, there's a penalty shout there with the referee waves away. Cal Naismith tries to shoot, turns onto his right foot. Cal Naismith has won it. He's won it for Luton with the last kick of the game. In the 97th minute, Luton having thrown away a 2-0 lead. Seen it pull back to 2 2. With probably the best player on the pitch. A pinch the points at the end. Luton 3, on the 2. Yeah, Luton scoring in, in the last last minute of the game was was uh, awful and a uh, horrible feeling. And um, I remember we were like pushed down in the last couple of minutes. and. Uh, I just I remember I was just thinking then they shouldn't get get the goal and uh, was trying to do everything for them not to score and I still think back now that that Luton game was if we got one point uh, it would have been more comfortable the last couple of games but uh, um, yeah that's that's the ups and downs in in, in the season uh, we had some late winners as well so um, yeah that's like give and take I, I guess. Despite all of Bournemouth's chances, it was another disappointing result against Hull City, with the Tigers scoring the only goal and taking all three points on the day. The Cherries were able to bounce back with a win away at Oakwell, partly thanks to a mistake from Barnsley keeper Bradley Collins. 
Bird Kelly from the back sends it out to the right and Jack Stacey. Stacey with an early ball forward to Solanke. The keeper's come out, got nowhere near it. Solanke over on the right-hand side, lifts one into the box. Jaden Anthony, Billings underneath it. And Phil Billing heads it past Brad Collins. And Bournemouth take the lead. A horror show at the back from Barnsley. Collins a long way out of his box, got nowhere near the ball. Solanke with the ball in, a high one from the right-hand side. Billing high above it to nod it past Brad Collins, who scrambled his way back to the goal line but couldn't keep it out. Phil Billing with his ninth of the season. Barnsley nil, Bournemouth one. At the end of January, the Cherries dropped to third behind Blackburn Rovers, but still had a game in hand. Scott Parker moved to strengthen the squad on deadline day, with a record five new signings coming into the club that day. Yeah, it was a busy day, definitely a busy day. I think we put ourselves in a position at that moment in January to, to feel that certainly um, if we can go and strengthen a little bit here, we, we put ourselves in a very good position to, to try and get promoted this year. Um, a lot of players in, um, which is sometimes difficult. I think that's, that's been proven a little bit. Um, but pleased that, that we managed to get, get the players we did to help us um, yeah, and, and push us through to the end, really. The month didn't get off to a great start and Bournemouth's FA Cup run was ended early by a disappointing loss to National League side Boreham Wood. Raymond's asked a lot of him, but he's found a cross. Marsh couldn't turn, chance for Ricketts! And Boreham Wood take the lead! 37-year-old Mark Ricketts! What a moment for him, what a moment for the travelling fans, and what a moment for the little guys in the FA Cup. Boreham Wood are in front of Bournemouth. Solanke right side of the box, Anthony at the back post wants it, if Solanke can get his head up, Solanke rolls it to Billing, back to Solanke, heavy touch, still just about alive, Campbell to Christie, oh it's in the bar! Goalkeeper might have got a touch, Anthony can't keep it in, I think he can, in fact he has kept it in, still alive, Jordan Zamora, right side of the box, drives it in towards Solanke, Pennington half clears, Billing, back it comes, Christie! Well, Sundic has lost it there as Birmingham trying to play around inside their own half. Jerry's got numbers here. Ryan Christie, edge of the box, knocks it inside right. Solanke shoots! Solanke scores! Half an hour played. Dom Solanke doesn't do drafts. He hasn't scored for four games. He's ended that run and put Bournemouth 2-0 to the good. And that is 20 for the season for Dom Solanke. Birmingham down the left hand side. I've seen better tackles than that one from Jefferson Lerma. That's a yellow. Uh, which uh, I think Hernandez has reacted there. It's Colombia and Cuba going head to head there on the far side. Phil Billing comes over and become, puts himself as the tower in between the two. Uh, Lerma, there was a bit, of, uh, a bit of angst in that challenge from Lerma. Given the context of the game, Willow, leading 2 0, that was right over in the far corner. But that's a red card. Is that a red card for Jefferson Lerma for that tackle? That's not a red card, no is it? No chance. I mean, and the push afterwards was was nothing more than a, a coming together. Oh, I don't know. This game has certainly been livened up by that sending off of Jefferson Lerma. In it comes from Jordan Graham. The header away this time from Solanke, only as far as Sundic, and then whipped him to the penalty, deflected and in! turned on its head even more so now because Onel Hernandez who was just tackled by Lerma for the red card has seen his shot deflected I think off Nat Phillips and with just over 20 minutes remaining it's now Bournemouth 2 with 10 men Birmingham 1 here come the cherries down on the right hand side Jaden Anthony into the penalty area Anthony's still going in the and loose Anthony
Yeah, to get my 20th goal was, was amazing. I think um, that was definitely a minimum um, goal that I wanted to hit at the start of the season. So I was definitely happy to get that, especially um, quite a while before the season ended. So I had some space to, to get some more. So um, yeah, like I said, I'm just, just happy to get the amount of goals that I did, did this season. Retrieved. Still plenty of bodies forward. Oh, there's a big appeal. And it's a penalty. Penalties given. Midway point in this first half. Gabriel can't believe it. Looking at it again, it's a decent ball in. It's half defended. It's a clear push, isn't it? Grimshaw dancing along his line. The little stutter. Oh, it's a great save. It's a poor penalty, but it's a huge save for Blackpool. Solanke will be disappointed with himself. Well, when they go in, you look good as a penalty taker. When they don't, you look a bit foolish. Here they come down this left-hand side. Connolly. Nicely done. Hamilton. His bowler. Oh, goodness me! Goodness gracious me, what a hit! Well, this man knows how to score against the top teams in the Championship. Two against Fulham earlier this season, now against Bournemouth. That is a beauty. Bournemouth have uh, won the last two league games, but lost two of the last four in all competitions. We're up against it today. His bowler. Oh, brilliant save. Travers again to the rescue for Bournemouth. They've got bodies forward. Look at all those green shirts in and around the box. It's time to twist the Scott Parker side. It's come loose. Oh, there it is. There's the equaliser. And it's the substitute, Jamal Lowe, who gets there first. His third league goal of the season. His first since October. It's just a ball into the box, isn't it? It's a hopeful ball, but it found the feet via a deflection. Green shirts committed forward. Opportunity here, if they can work it well, here's Dembele, Dembele to win it for Bournemouth! Would you believe it? Siriki Dembele! What a time to score your first Cherries goal! What a big goal that could be in the Championship promotion hunt! It's a cool finish! The overload was on. He could have squared it, he went for goal, and that is a superb finish from Dembele. Yeah, the Blackpool was, was a huge game for us to, as I say, was to get that 2-1 win in the end was, was great, and especially last minute, I think that really bonds the team and, and gives you that extra push to go into the next few weeks. When you can turn, you know, when you're 1-0 down and turn it into a 2-1 win so late on was a massive boost for, for everyone and, and gave us that sort of confidence going to the next one of the games uh, on a high and when Dem's got the winner I think you know it was such a buzz and, and really gives you that uh, boost going into the next few weeks. Powell with the touch cut out by Kelly but that's poor given to Powell and Jacob Brown could be in here's Smith wonderful goal he struck that beautifully well, there's a goal to upset the apple cart. It's Tommy Smith's first goal since scoring here in the win last season. Fox run into trouble. And uh, having lost it, he lunged in to try and retrieve it. And he's shown a straight red card. A quizzical look on the face of Morgan Fox. But he is given his marching orders. Well, that is one to be debated. Cantwell's free kick. In towards Kelly. And pounced on by Solanke. A late equaliser for Bournemouth to change the mood.
And there is still time for Bournemouth to go on and try and get another one. Campwell's free kick. And a back across goal by Kelly. And Solanke was never going to miss that. Campwell. Emiliano. Zamora. Goal side of Liam Moore. Solanke got his feet all wrong. But Jamal Lowe is there. He's popped up with a late winner. Double celebration for Jamal Lowe, who's just become a dad again this week. And he has come up with a huge goal here for Bournemouth. It is the late, late show as Bournemouth turned this game on its head. Solanke got his feet in a model, but Jamal Lowe kept his call and made absolutely sure. Yeah, it was great to, to finish February with four man the matches and um, to show the support from the fans was, was great and to show that they were voting for me was, was a great honour and yeah, thank you for to contribute and help out with some saves. Um, yeah, it gave me great confidence boost going into the last few months of the season. At the end of February, Bournemouth had climbed back up to second position with a healthy number of games in hand over third-placed Huddersfield. Moving into March, the four-game win streak unfortunately came to an end away at Preston with a 2-1 defeat. But the Cherries looked to get back on track when Peterborough came to Vitality Stadium. The ball over on the far side with Peterborough at the moment, with Joe Ward into the edge of the box, it comes, it runs loose for Marriott! And Mar has put the bottom side in front. It won't finish nil-nil this time. And Peterborough have stunned the Vitality Stadium. And Grant McCann is at it again here. Just before the half-hour mark, Jack Marriott slides in a goal. Bournemouth nil, Peterborough one. Phillips wins that tussle with Clark Harris. Solanke lays it off, and now Ryan Christie's on the move. Heading towards the penalty area. Christie onto his stronger left foot. Shoots for goal, and finds the bottom right-hand corner. Ryan Christie just got his head down, drove towards the edge of the penalty area, and the ball ended up low in the right-hand corner of the net. Christie pumps his arms, says to the crowd, come on! And after six and a half minutes of the second half, Bournemouth are back to 1-1. One -one. Well, perfect start to the second half. Christie... Absolutely magnificent, he must have gone through, I don't know, four or five, and then just slotted it home. Great work, great stuff, great finish, hard and low, down to the keeper's left, just found that the pocket. Zamora, left side of the box now. Cherries have got it. Jaden Anthony's got past his man. Still Anthony. Blocked away. Solanke! It's taken till added time, but Dom Solanke has found the back of the net. Credit to Jaden Anthony, who gets another assist. Works his way to the byline, and when the ball ran loose, Solanke stuck out his right foot. And four and a half minutes into overtime at the end of the half, Cherries have finally broken through against Derby. 1 0. What skill? One, one through the legs, two through the legs. Fantastic stuff. Lerma now, inside left channel, Solanke. Onto his right foot, Dom Solanke. He's found himself some room. Also denies him. because I think it was slightly behind him and then when I see him striking the ball I'm thinking he's not going to get enough on it but he did and smashed it hard and low into the bottom corner
over on the far side. Jordan Zamura cuts away from his man infield. It was a desperate challenge by Ince. Runs to Solanke, top of the box. Might be a room here for Lerma. Back to Solanke. Oh, that is fabulous. What a goal. Sensational link up between Lerma and Solanke. And the Reading born striker is on target for the 23rd time this season. Seven and a half minutes gone. A real early breakthrough. Beautifully crafted. 1-0. It was excellent, absolutely fantastic to watch. Quick passes. I think it took about seven to get his, the ball into Solanke. He calm as you like. Hard and low to the goalkeeper's right. Stacey threads it down this right-hand side for Jefferson Lerma. I am enjoying seeing Lerma in a more forward-thinking role. He knocks it into Solanke again. Ryan Christie's there, but Solanke runs away. Pulls it back to the penalty spot. Here's Cantwell. Let's it go for Christie. That's a fine stop from Leland, the keeper. That was heading for the bottom right corner. And then always in threw out his left hand and kept out Ryan Christie's effort. Yeardon, who feeds Ince, right corner of the penalty area here. Ince whips one into a very dangerous area. Phillips, what a stretch. Super defending from the Liverpool loanee there. Jao was coming in behind him, and Phillips stretched out his leg and hooked it away. Magnificent defending. If he, I mean, if he, if he misses it, then he on. Another Reading corner over on the far side. Whips in again, another good delivery. Phillips climbs high, only to as far as Ince edge of the area. Oh, that is a stunning equaliser from Tom Ince. No goalkeeper in the world save that snapshot on the edge of the box into the top right corner and the cherries are made to pay for slipping off the boil as this game has gone on seven and a half minutes from time 1-1 fourth out getting a few passes going and it's down the right now into the penalty area for Bournemouth down the right hand across the face to goal Anthony finishes it Bournemouth have taken the lead here at Huddersfield in a huge game in the championship it's Jade and Anthony with his eighth goal of the season, it was a brilliant ball down the right side of the box. It went across goal, and from about six yards out, Jaden Anthony slipped it past Lee Nichols and Cherry's lead here. It's 1-0. Into the middle now, Lewis Cook lets it run across his body and he's middle of the Huddersfield half. Touch evades him and now it's Lerma. Tries to play 1-2. Solanke in the penalty area. Solanke it's saved by Nichols and towards the edge of the box it's bouncing around. Lerma shoots! Lerma scores! Where did that come from? It's 2-0 to Bournemouth. Fist bumps from Scott Parker. Solanke was put through. Nichols came out to meet him. It was really well saved, but the ball just bounced towards the edge of the box and Lerma just hit it. Not a lot of power with his left foot. And it's just rolled into the far left corner, Willow. And Cherry's lead 2-0 inside the first half an hour here. Anthony now up against Turton towards the left corner of the penalty area. Zamora is overlapping. Billing pulls it back. Solanke with the flick and it's 3 0. What a start in this second half. Bournemouth have surely wrapped it up. It's Tom Solanke's 24th of the season inside the first minute of the second half. A Cherry's lead here. It's Huddersfield 0. Bournemouth 3. I think as a squad, um, we've always we've always turned up in the big games. Um, we knew it was, it was a big one. They they were quite close to us at the time, and yeah, and I think um, everyone was riled up for it before the game. And yeah, no, um, it's just a big performance from the squad to a man. We all worked our socks off, and yeah, no, um, a special day. Yeah, hardest field away was 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 the first really really big game of the season. I think um, going into it, basically we we had to win that game and. Um, I think me and, and, and most of the players did feel that pressure that day, but um, yeah, it was it was a great great result and great performance. And I think when we've we've had to go into games really needing the win, I think we've always showed up and, and come through it. Huddersfield was a big moment, really. It was the first time probably the team was going into the game, and it was the first time I felt that it was a it was a bit of a must win. Yeah, they were chasing us down a little bit, and they they were doing very very well. 
um, we was coming out of a bit of a, a rough patch. We was we was stumbling along a little bit, not nothing too drastic, but certainly um, it was a big game. And um, yeah, you know, I, I think in terms of performance, the way we executed, the way the team played, was the first time probably in the season that I started to look at this group. Although I knew what they were and I knew how they react to certain things. It was the first time I, I, I come away from thinking, you know, when, when this group need to, need to get a result or you need a performance, they're showing, they're showing traits that they can do that really. And Huddersfield was the first time for me as a coach to, that I realised that along with the performance, which was brilliant. With Bournemouth in second position and with a six point gap to Luton in third, the end of March looked positive for the Cherries. A jam-packed April was just around the corner, and with eight teams to face, there certainly wouldn't be any let-up. It went behind for a corner from the left-hand side here for this is the Robins to be delivered by James in towards the six-shot box. Bristol City get the header and get the lead. It's a goal for Rob Atkinson from the set piece. Travers flailing to his right. And Bournemouth inside four minutes have conceded here to Bristol City and their 1,400 travelling support have made the short journey and a go wild, 1-0 City. And now Solanke's gone down off the ball. Closer involved this time, Closer was the closest. I didn't see exactly what happened there, but just saw Solanke on the deck. So there's obviously a bit going on here, Willow. And the ball comes into Solanke again, he's trying to hold off closer now in the box. Solanke goes to the ground, that is a pretty strong pressure. Lost his balance, now here's Jordan Zamora, back into Solanke, who equalises! There's no flag! Tom Solanke claimed a free kick earlier, didn't get it, but what he did get was a goal! And the equaliser, and it is four games in a row that Tom Solanke has found the back of the net, and that is 25 for the season for Dominic Solanke, a much-needed equaliser. Here's Lewis Cook into the area. Run this time to shoot. Oh, it's gone in! Lewis Cook from range. We've seen it before. And the defender moved out of the way. The goalkeeper couldn't get there. And Lewis Cook scores for the first time this season. And Bournemouth, either side of half time, have turned it around to leave Bristol City 2-1. Now Zamora chose slightly forced away from goal here with a couple of those shooting opportunities having passed. Dembele goes past Scott who tries to pull him back. Dembele to the byline, onto his right foot, still going! Oh, that is sensational! Sensational Sariki! 3-1! The clear water that Bournemouth have been begging for. And now a huge sigh of relief around the Vitality Stadium because of that man, Super Sariki Dembele. What a goal! Unbelievable. Just when you want somebody who can absolutely open up a defence. How many did he go by? Three, four. And then just set the goalkeeper down as well. Oh, what a run, what a run. We've played one of the added four minutes. 3-1 to Bournemouth. Here's Conway, right side of the penalty area here, bearing down on goal. No one coming to meet him at the moment. Conway drives it in, and Bristol City have scored. And it comes from the youngster, Conway. And we mentioned that Andreas Weimann has done very little in the game. Well, he has the goal, and all of a sudden now, the Cherries will have a nervy couple of minutes of added time, unnecessarily so. Obviously, I said in a lot of in my interviews, I want to try and score more goals. Um, I don't really believe that they're, they're in there somewhere. just need to try and trust myself a bit more and, and shoot. But no, again, that's a, another milestone of the season. Um, coming back from an injury and getting a goal, getting your first start and stuff like that. So it's all a part of the process and hoping to score a few more. The next three games didn't go to script, with the Cherries unable to muster a victory against West Brom, Sheffield United, or Middlesbrough. But the team returned to winning ways with an away trip to Coventry City.
Matete, right side of the penalty area. Now Wilson again, hugging the touchline, whips one in towards Mitrovic, who gets the header down, that's a brilliant save from Travers. He was almost behind the line somehow, Mark Travers. Fulham are claiming the goal, it's been given. It's not a save by Travers, it's a goal for Mitrovic. We're just seeing a replay now, Willow. It's very, very close. That's not all on the ball. That is very, very close, Willow. There seems to be part of the ball That's in line with the post. It's got to be all the ball over the line. Travers waves everybody forward. There are some fans leaving here as Travers launches it long. 40 seconds on the watch. Cherry's one behind to Fulham. Closest rivals, Forest have won. Here they come with Adam Smith. Left side of the penalty area. Goes down. Penalty! Adam Smith fouled! Referee Scott points to the spot in the 95th minute of the game. Oh, my God. Well, it's Harry Wilson, Willow, who's given away the penalty as he came sweeping in with the challenge on Adam Smith, who checks back. I think it's a penalty, but he's kicked his leg. Yeah, it looks like he's took his legs. I've no problem with that. I'm just worried about Dom. Adam Smith on the halfway line can barely watch. It could be a massive point for the Cherries in the promotion race if Solanke can beat Marek Rodak away to our left. The North Stand hold their breath. Solanke puffs out his chest, approaches the ball right foot in and scores! Yes! Yes! Solanke held his nerve. The penalty at the end of the Fulham game was, was a crazy one. Uh, probably one of the, the biggest moments um, of my career in, in that sense of uh, pressure. But um, yeah, especially with, with how long I had to wait. But uh, I just had to keep my cool. I knew it was basically the last kick of the game and it would have been a massive point. So um, yeah, I just, just cooled myself down and, and got it done. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not in a million years I was going to take that penalty, no way. Um, to be fair, I said to them after, I was like, that's, that's unbelievable that he took that penalty in the last second, that the pressure that he must have been feeling was immense. Um, I, I couldn't even watch the penalty, so I let, let alone take it myself. Um, yeah, yeah, it was, it was unbelievable that, that he had the, the um, ability to do that in the last seconds of the game. It was picked up and given away though by the Cherries and Adam Smith desperately in pursuit here as Pirro picks it up now, edge of the box, it comes to Obafemi, chance 25 yards out there, stand off him, Obafemi with some very quick feet, squeezes it out to the right and then a cross goal, Travers away and volleyed home by Pirro! Five minutes on the clock, worst possible start for the Cherries in South Wales. Give it away by Lowe, who then slips and now Swansea have it back. And here's Pirro again, just outside the penalty area. And that's 2 0. Joe Pirro. And the Cherries, a long way from home, have got a long way back into this game. And here goes Pirro over the halfway line, looking for Obafemi through the centre here. Obafemi's got options to his right, it's Cyrus Christie, chance to shoot! And probably a chance to win the game! And put this Tuesday night in South Wales beyond the Terries as they throw bodies forward, trying to get back in the game. They've been stung on the counter, Cyrus Christie lashes it into the roof of the net. 19 to play, Terries looking for some sort of leg up into this game, 3-0 behind. Seeing their gap erode to two points, in it comes from Anthony, headed home from close range, and Bournemouth have got a goal! Keeper. And it is Kiefer Moore, drowning out the boos of the Swansea City supporters when he came on, who scores for the first time in Bournemouth colours. Anthony, right side of the box, that's going to be too heavy, is it, for Laird? Just about manages to get there and win a corner. Cherries are screaming for a handball, and it's a penalty! On the advice of the assistant on the far side, the cross from Laird has been handled by a Swansea defender, and initially he gave a corner, he's now given a penalty to Bournemouth. As we see Laird's cross, and it's a penalty, Willow, the defender has slid in with his arms, his arms up. His arms above it's his head. Good spot from the defence by Ryan Manning. 
away to our left in front of the Cherry supporters to give them hope with 10 minutes remaining. Currently, Swansea lead Bournemouth 3-1. Solanke to reduce the areas to 3-2. Again takes his time, up against Andy Fisher. Same corner, same result. Solanke scores, Swansea 3, Bournemouth 2. Dear me, can we squeeze a point out of this from giving ourselves a chance? 10 minutes plus injury time. Great composure from Dominic, wasn't it? Out to this near side and Lloyd Kelly again. All eyes on James Livington, the fourth official's board in a moment as Brady swings a ball into the six-yard box. What a save! The rebound has gone in! Oh, my God! And it is Kiefer Moore, who has equalised for the Cherries in the 90th minute. The former Cardiff man silences Swansea, silences South Wales with two in a Bournemouth shirt on his return from injury. And Swansea from three up have been pegged back. What another twist in this promotion race. Unbelievable. 3-3. Three, three. The Swansea game was was mental to be fair, you know, to even really make myself available for that. Um, as I had a setback. Uh, just before that and I've trained one day um, so to be available for that game I was I was buzzing especially being against uh, an old rival um, so yeah but to have the impact I had on that day was was amazing and and you know I thought it was just a combination of all the hard work I've put in through my rehab. Heck, you know you look back at it now uh, and think of it as, as a massive point but you know um, like, like you said we were desperate to to get all three points in the night and you find yourself 3-0 down with 20 minutes to go um, you know you, you, you're scared for what the outcome's going to be but um, yeah an incredible night we didn't really get to celebrate it too much because it was straight on to, to Saturday obviously but um, yeah it was probably the, the big start of Kiefer's reign that night. <laughs> it was another there's more evidence of this team um, in terms of never giving up um, this team showing real character great mentality um, and obviously first time really Kiefer um, after coming to the football club and being out injured with his foot really at the first time we'd seen him back and I mean what an impact you know, comes on two goals um, and to be honest with you pretty remarkable we get back in the game there at 3-3 free free and really at times probably look at you could have won the game really so again that was a big result for us it wouldn't have been a result um, we wanted to have lost the game at, this, at that moment in the season it's about momentum it's about it's about picking up results and keeping the team's morale and, and, and mindset in a good place and certainly although we wanted to win the game um, it felt like probably a win considering where we were and it kept us on track to to see out the, the remaining part Driving forward from central, the central defensive area. Billing with a little header on and Solanke is onside. Solanke's first touch is brilliant. His second is even better. And Bournemouth are in front. Blackburn stood and waited for the flag. Phil Billing with the assist. Dominic Solanke hits 30 goals for the season. With as calm a finish as you could expect. And the Cherries in front on a massive afternoon here in East Lancashire. Well, great work. But I have to say, my initial thought was, he's offside no chance of seeing it again so we'll have to wait for this evening but who cares we're one up and that's all that matters so now Ryan Christie down this right hand side as Blackburn throw bodies forward needing to get something from the game Christie switches it to the left and Dembele not a great first touch tried to hurdle the challenge of Van Heck referee plays the advantage Van Heck's already been booked Solanke in the box here for the Cherries square to Billing yes smashes it home and has he smashed the Cherries a giant step towards the Premier League Pulled back to Phil Billing on the edge of the penalty area, who picks up his 10th goal of the season into double figures for the first time in his career. And it's a huge goal in the context of this promotion race. Is Bournemouth too clear. Long ball down the centre here for, for Blackburn. Uh, sorry, for the Cherries. Dembele's nicked it back and Dembele goes past his man and here's Phil Billing for another. And there is Phil Billing for another. Game over. 
job done in East Lancashire, and the Cherries now will take it back to the Vitality Stadium with their two attempts to try and book promotion back to the Premier League. Their work on the road is done. They lead by three goals to nil. At the end of April, promotion was tantalisingly close for Bournemouth. A victory against Nottingham Forest was all that separated them from a return to the top flight. The Forest game was, a, was a, the climax game. It was, the, it was the, the end one where we needed to win the game to get the job done, which we all set out when I stepped foot in this building. And, the first meeting I had with this group of players was there was one goal and that was we want to try and get promoted, we want to become a Premier League football club. You know, I want, I want them to become Premier League football players and that, that has been hard work, hard graft and at the end of it, in, 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 in one game against Nottingham Forest, we had the opportunity to do that. The feeling around the game was, was massive um, for both teams but um, I just felt like there was no point thinking too much into it. I just needed to play, play my game and, and um, stick to what we do and we'd done that. So it, it was amazing. We knew it was a big game. Um, we had a big performance um, against Blackburn just before, so we was, we was all feeling quite confident and we knew on our day we, we can beat anyone. So yeah, we just, we, we just knew we had to work our socks off and it was a big opportunity for us and yeah, no, it was an exciting time. I, I was nervous. Um, I always have a little bit, of, little bit of nerves before most games and stuff. But yeah, I was trying to sleep throughout the day leading up to the game, and I couldn't really sleep at all. So I think it was more excitement and stuff. And the gaffer touched on that before the game, just how excited he was for us, and you just got to try and enjoy the moment. Can the Cherries though seal it tonight? It's what everybody here has come for. Nine minutes to play. Over on the left, Christie waiting on the edge of the penalty area. Here's Jordan Zamora going past two. What a run from Zamora! A hush almost descends across the Vitality Stadium, descends across Bournemouth and probably descends across Nottingham as well as Phil Billing stands over this free kick for Bournemouth. A yard outside the penalty area as we look away to our right. Forrest have got about an eight-man wall. Ryan Christie's there too as the decoy. But Phil Billing, who scored two on Saturday, has got an opportunity here from the set play. Billing, left footed, it's a cheeky one, square, and smashed in! Kiefer Moore! More, more, more! And Bournemouth, all of a sudden, are seven and a half minutes away from the Premier League! A brilliantly worked set piece! Skullduggery, hoodwinkery, Kiefer Moore! What a magnificent strike by Moore. He had to only he had to hit the target. That was the main thing from that angle. But what a what a time this lad is having at Bournemouth. Two goals in the first game. He comes on the sub and he could win his promotion. There's all sorts of substitutes getting ready to come on for down there in Forest. Unbelievable stuff. Supporters now, play goes off. Everybody's so happy, what a sight. As we look down to the pitch, almost centrally, there is a red flare being held aloft by the Cherry supporters. The players engulfed, I think some of them made their way down the tunnel. It's all very friendly.
the free kick, um, it was it was just completely off the cuff. Um, so I saw Phil uh, about to take his shot, um, saw how the wall lined up. I distanced myself uh, just so I had a more of an angle. Um, and then, yes, we, we pretty much just locked eyes. He saw how much space I had. I was, I was surprised by the space I had. Um, and I was quietly shouting, Phil, Phil, give, it, give me the ball. And then, um, yeah, he slipped me and then I've, I've just done the rest. You know, the free kick was um, literally, we had not worked on that at all. It was just me and Kiefer kind of, um, I stood at the ball and Ryan Christie actually took the ball and I kind of gave him like, shoot, because that's kind of his range. Um, but I think the gaffer wanted me to take it and uh, yeah, I took the ball and I was kind of stood like contemplating where to put the ball because I seen just a, a yellow wall and not a lot of space. I couldn't really see the goal. Um, but then I clocked eyes with Keith, Kiefer and he's kind of like already stepped up as if he's going to shoot. So I thought I need to pass this ball. Um, and then, like I said, full credit to, to Kiefer, all credit uh, with the finish because it's a hard finish. And, and he kept it down low and uh, he put it in. And like I said, he's, he's already a bomb of legend. Once the whistle went, uh, the pitch was, was swarmed with people. Everyone was jumping on each other. And it was just an yeah, unbelievable moment for everyone. I think uh, the first person was Will Dennis, ran up to me. <laughs> uh, we had a big hug in the middle of the pitch and then it just got swamped after that. But um, yeah, I think that was just pure relief and, and excitement for, for what's to come. Yeah, after the game, when the final whistle blew, um, I, to be honest, I didn't really know what to do. I think everyone in, in the squad was just amazed of what we actually achieved. And it was just, so much celebration going on and the, the fans running on the pitch and everyone getting together and enjoying that moment so it was it was special the celebrations after were well deserved um, and rightly so these players and this group and this football club everyone related to this football club have worked tirelessly this season and all have all paid a massive massive role and part in us getting promoted this year fans as well owner every single person and um I'm pleased that we've managed to get it over the line. I'm pleased that we can say now we're a, we're a Premier League football club. And it runs out to the left-hand side of the box with Billing, a little bit of a chip and charge down the left side and wins a throw-in off Saville, who's out of position. And Kiefer Moore is in one-on-one -on -one here from Billing's throw. He's got Anthony Square. Kiefer Moore surely will go himself. Finish. He done ever so well. He just gave the keep to the eyes. He had Dembele just on the outside of him. He could have side passed to him. He did the little fake and killed it past the keeper. Unbelievable story. Keeper more. The feeling for, for the promotion, get back to the Premier League, was was massive. Um, a little bit of relief, I'm not going to lie. I really, really wanted it this year and stuff. And and for the the team and the staff as well. There's a lot of young players in in the squad and. They deserve to experience the Premier League because it's it's everybody's dream. So no, the final whistle was everything, and it was just sheer joy. I've always dreamed of playing in the Premier League. Obviously, when the club um, went in the Premier League before, I was more so in, in the academy, so I didn't get the opportunity. But yeah, no, um, it's a special special feeling. I I can't wait to to get going already next season, and, and um, hopefully have some good times. It's crazy. I think. Um, like I said, the, the hard work that we've put in throughout the whole season has just been, been crazy. So to top it off with um, promotion back to the Premier League, I think it's, it's made it really worthwhile. I think it's every kid's dream. And for me personally, it's something that no one can ever take away from me. Yeah, it means uh, everything for us to, to be back in the Premier League. That, that's where this club belongs. And, uh, and um, yeah, I'm happy to be, to be a part of it. And I think everyone uh, in the squad have have played a, a very cru crucial part of it and a um, uh, yeah, big squad with a lot of good players, uh, uh, so many good players in, in this team and uh, uh, yeah, it's, it's lovely to, to say that we are all pl Premier League players now. To be promoted to the Premier League is, is amazing. Um, I've dreamt of this moment for, for many, many years as, as, you know, as a little boy and my, my, my big dream was to play in the Premier League and 
to say that I can now do that is is unbelievable. Um, I can't wait for next season and you know see that fixture list. It's it's going to be incredible.